Hey everybody, how are you today? This is Jim Prusak, physical therapist from the Pain PT. Hope you guys are doing well. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't not subscribed yet to the channel, please do. Helps the channel get more visibility and you'll get alerts when I pop new videos up here. Uh, today we're going to talk about emotions a bit more. I'm going to share with you guys a hot off the press study that was published in the clinical journal of Pain in May of this year, 2024. And we're gonna go through this. I found it to be a really good study because it highlights some of the things we talk about with emotions. And we're gonna go over some of these uh, maladaptive strategies that people might be using unconsciously or consciously that are affecting or hurting you guys with your pain intensity and dysfunction. So we'll go through some of that here today. I'm gonna to read through some of the data from the study. I really like to support the work I'm doing here with good clinical information because that really backs up the work we're doing, give it some legit legitimacy. Uh, we need evidence-based practice here, okay? So it's not something you're listening to me just tell you guys this. It's something that's been studied and that there's more and more data coming out to support the work we're doing here on the brain and the nervous system. And just remember, if you guys need any further assistance or help in your journey, my role here as a uh, health practitioner is to help people uh, identify that they have a brain and nervous system condition and then to help them put into practice some of these strategies and work with the person to make progress and improve. So if you're looking for one-to-one -one help, you can always go to my website, thepainpt.com. You can sign up for individual sessions or if you want to join the groups, I offer two-hour weekly group sessions as well where I go over more of this information, have time for questions, and help you guys out. Okay, so saying that, let's go to the study here, and I'll link in the YouTube notes the abstract to the study. It's copyrighted, so I'm not able to link the whole study, but I'm going to go to it and break it down for you guys here today from the Clinical Journal of Pain. And the title of the study is Momentary Emotion Regulation Strategies and Pain Experience Among Adults with Chronic Pain. Now, remember, I want you to substitute your chronic symptom for chronic pain. Just because it's chronic pain doesn't mean that that's the only thing we're talking about here. Um, it can be a number of different somatic symptoms in the body that are chronic in nature that have the same brain and nervous system driving factors behind it. Okay, but this study was done on people with chronic pain, and it was done on 53 adults who were experiencing chronic pain. And what was really interesting about the study was that they looked at the moment to moment emotion regulation strategies that people were doing. And in that moment, the, the co-concurrent uh, pain levels and pain experience that people were having. So they were looking for a, a relationship between these two things, something that's not really been studied very often. So that I thought this was quite an interesting one to look at. And they had people do this uh, five times a day for seven days, okay, to rate which strategies they were using on emotion regulation strategies, and then also their pain experience, how much pain they're experiencing, how much um, effect it was having on them. So let's go through the, the beginning of the study and the reasons why. Um, first, they talk about this biopsychosocial model, we call it, um, chronic pain and chronic symptoms. We, we know that pain and, and these chronic symptoms is multidimensional, uh, involves biological, psychological, social aspects. And within the framework, they say here, the researchers, there's been a wealth of research highlighting the role of emotions in chronic pain. Specifically, research consistently identifies a bi-directional relationship between the pain experience or symptom experience and emotions specifically negative emotions, whereby pain increases negative emotions and negative emotions increase pain, right? So it works bi-directionally, both ways can have an impact. Where I've seen this in many people where emotions themselves create symptoms in the body or increase symptoms and the symptoms themselves can create more negative emotion, which can cause this looping effect in the body. So what they say here is given these findings, attenuating or modulating negative emotions is, is essential to improving functional pain outcomes. Read that one more time. 
And this is why I do put an emphasis on working with emotions as one of our strategies. Given these findings, attenuating or modulating negative emotions is essential to improving functional pain outcomes or functional symptom outcomes. Remember, emotions are one piece of the brain puzzle, just like thoughts and beliefs are another piece, but we're really highlighting the emotional piece today. Now, emotion regulation, just like it sounds, is how we deal with our emotions, how we regulate emotion when it arises in our system. What do we do about it? Okay, so it's the cognitive and attentional strategies to modulate or maintain an emotional experience. And again, it's particularly relevant to the pain experience or the symptom experience and the pain or symptom regulation. Now, we have two sides of these strategies. We have an adaptive emotional regulation strategies and we have maladaptive strategies, meaning right, some are good, healthy, been proven through the literature and some are not so good. They're not necessarily healthy. You're gonna learn here and see how they can impact the symptom and pain experience. So let's go through some of these here. Um, and in fact, before we start that, let me just finish up with a couple bits of more information about some of the past data. Okay, so a recent meta-analysis study, which looked at multiple studies, identified emotion regulation strategies as a risk and maintenance factors for chronic pain. Okay, other work has linked emotional dysregulation to other pain-related problems like opioid misuse. Okay, so what we do here is, um, we're gonna look at these emotional regulation strategies. It hasn't been studied before, especially in this light of looking at the moment to moment emotions people are having and how they're regulating them. And then also looking at the pain in the moment. Okay, so again, we looked at a 53 people who were, they were assessing for pain and emotion regulation strategies five times over seven days. These were done with adults. And the strategies again were divided into adaptive, and what the adaptive strategies they used were reappraisal, it's called cognitive reappraisal, uh, acceptance, you heard me talk a lot about acceptance, and what we call problem solving, okay? Solving the problem, what it's related to. Reappraisal is looking at something, making something that we perceive as being negative or not good into something more positive. Acceptance is just like it sounds, talk a lot about accepting some of your feelings, and again, problem solving, just like it sounds, is finding solutions to what's going on with this situation or with the pain or with the emotions. The maladaptive strategies, the ones that aren't so good for emotion regulation, you guys are, might have heard me talk about some of these before. Is number one is worry, experiential avoidance, so avoiding the feelings, avoiding the emotions, expressive suppression, right, which is suppressing the expression of the emotion, self-criticism, it's a big one, and rumination. Okay, so I'll read those again. These are the maladaptive strategies they used here. They were screening for, as well as the adaptive ones. So the adaptive ones were reappraisal, acceptance, problem solving. Okay, there's also other ones, like one, one more is called affect labeling. These are some of the ones I work with in individual sessions with people, and we go over in the groups as well. But these maladaptive ones are really important to catch. Again, they're worrying, experiential avoidance, expressive suppression, holding in the, the expression of the emotion, self-criticism, and rumination. Okay, so they assess for these here, and they actually asked them through some questions um, to identify which of these strategies they were using. And I'll read out some of these questions because some of you may relate to this. So these maladaptive coping strategies included worry. Did you worry about the pain? Experiential avoidance. Did you push down your feelings or put them out of your mind? Expressive suppression. Did you hide your feelings from others? Self-criticism. Did you criticize yourself for your feelings? And rumination. Did you ruminate about the pain? Okay, so adaptive coping strategies included Acceptance, did you allow or accept your feelings? Reappraisal, did you try to think about the pain differently to change how you were feeling and in a positive way? And problem solving, did you come up with any ideas to change the pain or fix the problem? And participants were asked to rate the extent to which they utilize these strategies. 
Okay, so it was over a week again, five times a day, 53 people. And here's the here's what they found in the, the data. Um, specifically, using more maladaptive emotional regulation strategies than the person's norm, as well as more maladaptive strategies was associated with greater pain intensity, pain interference, and pain-related negative affect or emotion, more, more re pain-related negative emotion. Okay, examining individual strategy use indicated that worry, rumination, experiential avoidance, expressive suppression, and self-criticism were each associated with greater overall pain experience. All right, so here we are finding the data that using some of these maladaptive emotion regulation strategies were indeed shown to create a worsening pain experience for these people. And again, the ones that were positive for this were worrying, rumination, experiential avoidance, expressive suppression, and self-criticism. These are all ones that I've talked about at different times that we're learning to, to reduce or break down the use of because they're not helpful, right? They're maladaptive coping strategies or regulation strategies for emotion. And what they found here as well in the broader literature uh, around emotion regulation, there's been a number of studies done that, that there is consistent evidence that maladaptive strategies are more strongly related to psychopathology, like anxiety and depression, which again, are I always mention are two of the biggest things we see uh, that are connected with chronic symptoms in the body. They also found that uh, drawing from the longitudinal treatment research, the initial emotion regulation strategy use may be especially important, the person's first off using. As changes in maladaptive but not adaptive strategy use were most predictive of improvement in psychopathology. So improvement in the anxiety and, and a depression by altering and changing the maladaptive strategies. That was what was helpful to reduce anxiety and depression, which would, as you know, reduce the somatic symptoms as well in the body. Okay, so again, the results from the current study support the previous results that the notion that maladaptive emotion regu regulatory strategies is associated with greater pain experience. Okay, and they talk here about the importance of acceptance-based approaches in the treatment of chronic pain, that these strategies may be most effective when individuals with chronic pain are more likely to utilize the maladaptive ones. Okay, so when we can switch from some of these maladaptive ones to more adaptive emotion regulation strategies, that's when it's shown to, to cause the, the greatest effect in people. Okay, so the last thing I'll read from the study was overall the current study provides additional evidence for the importance of momentary real-time emotion regulation strategies in response to the pain experience, or we'll substitute your symptom for that, which has important clinical implications for chronic pain management and provides continued support for the targeting of these strategies and treatment. Okay, so I hope that's helpful for you guys to understand that emotions and the way we deal with these emotions in real time have actual real time effect on the symptoms we're experiencing. In this case, the pain experience was worse, was more intense, more negative emotion was created, more disuse was created in the person. So we really wanna to work to <clears throat> look at our strategies and what we're doing with our emotions and that we wanna start adapting healthy strategies for regulating emotion. And again, some of the ones I looked at here today were cognitive reappraisal, um, acceptance, problem solving. Um, other ones are called affect labeling, um, labeling how you feel, just labeling, I feel angry, I feel sad, I feel anxious. It's called affect labeling. <clears throat> Excuse me, all these things can reduce the intensity of emotion and shift your brain centers as well, which is what we're working to do. So guys, I hope this was helpful today. I want to support the work I'm doing with real-time evidence and again, this is a hot off the press study of this year, May of 2024. So I wanted to share it with you guys. Again, if you're looking for support, if you need help or you're finding yourself struggling, reach out. This is what I do for a living now full time. 
is to help people get over and work with chronic symptoms in the body by using some of these mind-body approaches or approaches that target your brain and nervous system and work on helping your body feel better by um, changing your brain, changing your mind. All right, everybody. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and we'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.